Hi, I'm Shannon Higgins, a core member of the Humanode Project. In this episode of Humanode in Simple Terms, I would like to go over one of the most basic of basic questions that many have. What the hell is Humanode? As a starter, I'll be going over some of the basic elements of the Humanode, and will briefly highlight some of its more distinct features. So, let us start with the first question. What is Humanode? In short, Humanode is a financial platform based on a decentralized ledger, backed by and operated by nodes across the world, and are created and maintained by using auditable pseudonymous biometric identifications. I know that's a mouthful of words there, so let me briefly explain how traditional financial platforms work. In traditional monetary systems, Often, each country has their own currency and banking system that is controlled and operated by a centralized authority, normally the central bank, which in turn is fully controlled and regulated by each nation according to their own laws or needs. In the world of cryptocurrency, unless local laws prohibit it, the currency transcends national borders, is decentralized, meaning no single government nor power has authority or control over it, its ledger is normally based on blockchain-based decentralized ledgers and is quite often governed by a DAO or a decentralized autonomous organization. How much control over the system you can get is different from currency to currency depending on the consensus mechanism. In the case of proof of work, it is based on how much computing power you own, or in the case of proof of stake, it is how much of the currency in the system you own and keep in the system. And in both cases, you need 51% or 66% depending on the system to have full control. Looking back at traditional monetary systems, the issuance of currency is based on a fiat credit cycle. And in the case of cryptocurrencies, it is either set in the protocol or is decided by the consensus mechanism of the particular governing DAO. In simple terms, you may have heard of the term mining and or staking. You see, when a transaction happens in cryptocurrencies, the transaction needs to be scribbled down on a ledger, saying something like, Mr. A sent $10 to Mrs. B. So Mr. A now owns $90, and Mrs. B owns $110. Basically what happens next is that if 51% of the nodes agree that that is indeed what happened, the platform will send out a tough cryptographic equation, and the nodes or computers across the globe race to solve the equation. Whoever solves that equation first gets to create the block in the blockchain, where it writes down the transaction in the ledger, and in return is rewarded with a freshly minted token for their effort. This process is called mining, and it is basically how Bitcoin works. Oh yeah, and if you try to cheat the system or act maliciously, the stake is your hardware used, which will be blacklisted and will become unusable in the system from that point on. In the case of proof-of-stake systems, the process is pretty much the same. But instead of seeing who has the most computing power and use the most effort to solve the equation, the person who gets to write the block is determined by a percentage chance based on how much of the currency you have staked or kept locked in the system. Say I own and have staked 1% of all currency of a system, I have a 1% chance of earning the right to inscribe the transfer in the ledger and earn a transaction fee for my effort. In the case of proof of stake networks, your stake is your wealth, so if you are a malicious actor, the tokens you have staked or locked in the system can be slashed or taken away. Oh, and in the case of human node, the consensus mechanism is based on a one biometric ID equals one node equals one vote. All human nodes share the profit equally, and the issuance of currency is based on the FAF hypothesis, which I'll be talking about a little bit later. Naturally, your stake is your biometric identification, meaning if you are a malicious actor, your identity gets blacklisted, and depending on the offense, gets a temporary ban or a permanent ban for the participation.
Back in 2017, the founders of Humanode, who believed that cryptocurrency and decentralized finance was the way of the future, noticed some major flaws in the existing systems. Although cryptocurrencies had the possibility of solving many of the problems existing in the current fiat monetary cycle, and were considered decentralized, in reality, they had just as many problems that needed to be addressed for them to become a true global financial platform that could evolve into a platform that could support a true global economy that was fair to all. Setting aside the issues of how mining platforms use more electricity than over 73 individual nations and are not even slightly eco-friendly, or the fact that the transactions per second were limited, or that you needed to keep upgrading the computers non-stop, or that the ledger keeps growing forever, requiring more and more storage space, or even the fact that the transaction fees or gas prices were rising without control. The biggest problems with traditional cryptocurrency platform was that A, they weren't truly decentralized, and those with more resources or money could basically control the entire systems. And B, new currency was only issued to validators, which is a small fraction of the people involved, meaning the systems are based on the principle that those who have will be the most rewarded. Basically, this means that in essence, they were no different compared to the traditional finance, in the sense that those who had the power and money had the largest voice. The only difference was the whole traditional system were nation-based. In the case of cryptocurrency, it is global-based, and in some cases, even fewer people had control. Let's look at Bitcoin for a moment. Currently, seven mining pools or groups of people actually control 55% of the entire network, meaning that those seven groups, in theory, could collude to reverse the transactions or fully control the billions or trillions of dollars in the network as they see fit. In the case of Ethereum, it is said that three pools control 51%. In the case of a smaller system such as Polkadot, the top 20 stakers own over 66% of the system. So, going back to human and our founders, the founders basically felt that in order for any financial platform to evolve into a truly global platform that would not only transcend the limitations of borders, but of race, gender, wealth, locations, and background, but would provide equal opportunity and fairness for all involved, no matter rich or poor, we needed to find a way to create a platform that limited how much power one person or entity could have, grant equal rights, and proportionally distribute the wealth created in the network. This is when the founders came up with the idea of utilizing biometric IDs to create a system that would allow one person equals one node equals one vote. At first, it basically seemed like it was a pipe dream. I mean, simply put, we didn't have the technology to back the concept. Fortunately, with technology catching up to our needs in 2020, here we are. Without going into too many technical elements, there are some core concepts and features that lay the foundation of Humanoid. 1. Biometric Identification Each human being is unique, and that uniqueness is what brings value. As long as you can prove that you are a unique human being and that you are alive, you can create a node, have equal voting power to everyone else, and equally earn commission for you being you. What is even more exciting is the fact that Humanode Core devised a way to create decentralized pseudonymous identities that establish a reliable civil defense. In other words, the identities remain private, and the existence of a real human being is audited in a decentralized fashion. Or in simple terms, it's super safe and secure. 2. Equal Ownership each human node is a co-owner of the technology that is implemented, have equal rights, and will earn equal rewards and transaction fees. 3. A cost-based fee system. As all validators in human node are equal and have the same hardware requirements, we can calculate how much validators spend to create a cost-based fee model, making fees stable in dollar value despite token price fluctuations meaning we have a cost-based fee system with a strict formula, making fees very stable and cheap. 4. 
Fath-based monetary policy to determine emission. We believe that a monetary base should be rebalanced according to the amount of value created in the system, and that any emissions should be proportionally delivered to each and every participant in the network. In simple terms, we compare the value created in the network in two different time periods. If the value created in the second time period is different from the first, the algorithm calculates the percentage difference and changes the monetary supply by the same percentage. The issuance is distributed proportionally across every account in the network, meaning that the token holders always own the same percentage of the token supply. 5. The Humano DAO, the Vortex. Every user who has gone through the proper biometric processing has the ability to participate in the governance of Humano. The governors will have different rights depending on the proof of time, or how long you have been participating, and proof of devotion, meaning your contribution to the system through action. One thing that might interest you is the fact that after four years from the launch, those who started actively governing and participating in the system from the get-go will have absolutely equal governing rights as the founders of the system, meaning that although the founders and core members will still participate and be very involved, the whole project will be handed over to the humanoid community as the time goes by. Okay, since you asked, I will briefly give you an idea of the technology stacks that support humanoid. Humanoid utilizes a custom Snow family based consensus protocol, utilizes substrate framework, uses private biometric search and matching, implements a FAF monetary algorithm and rebalancing system, uses decentralized auditable liveness detection, will use Aragon based Vortex DAO, and utilizes EVM compatible smart contract layers. And no, I am not going into each technical detail today. The reason is simple. We are focused on allowing and maintaining a one human equals one node equals one vote system that is fair to all participants. And although we are developing some of the most cutting edge technologies as the backbone of the system and to protect the integrity, we are not married to the technologies. And if something superior becomes available, we will not hesitate on utilizing that technology meaning that up until we launch a public network, one technology can be replaced in a flash, making the videos that mention the technology obsolete. Plus, we'll have other opportunities to talk about the technology. I hope I was able to give you an idea of what the Humano project is about and have managed to spark your interest a little. To be totally honest, at this stage, we do not know if Humanoid will solve all of the issues of decentralized financial systems, and I am sure new challenges will arise as we move forward. What I can say, though, is that we are confident that we will be able to lay the groundwork for a system that can address and tackle the challenges to come by giving power to and a voice to the people equally. Once again, I would like to invite you all to participate and get involved in one of the greatest social experiments of all times and this discussion of how to create a truly global financial platform that could be owned by all, fair to all, equal to all, and inclusive, no matter where you live, who you are, the color of your skin, your gender, how much you own or do not own, or your beliefs. See you again next time. Ta-ta for now.